like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Carol Fluger. I am a product manager for uh, the Dell FX architecture, the servers, the platforms that are within the architecture, and also the, 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 the blade uh, counterparts to it. As you're aware, this is kind of based upon our modular family. When we talk about the introduction of the FX architecture, remember FX stands for flexible, so it's fairly simple. This is kind of a new revolutionary way of looking at this combination of racks, of blades, and also keeping things into a very standard type of form factor in a 2U chassis. Um, one of the prime things we wanted to work on, I don't want to make this to be too much of a marketing speak, is to, to, to provide something that will help maximize your workloads, keep things really quite simple, and then you know also make it to the maximum uh, efficiency point so that the work that's being done is being done to the best of its capabilities. Uh, as a result, we've had to look at different things as to kind of tailor the, the, the entire product line to, as far as the FX goes, to make sure that we hit these three, uh, these three milestones. And the picture you see here is the front of the FX2 chassis. Uh, what okay. happens to have two compute nodes on board, and then the bottom part of it is actually something that has been a bit redesigned. It's called the FD332. This is our storage node. So we're seeing compute nodes, and we're seeing storage nodes sitting with inside the same chassis. Uh, I do have the chassis here on the table, and we'll kind of go through it in just a second. So it's a convergence. We're taking the best of our blades, the best of our racks, and kind of merging it into this, this form factor that we call FX. I want to be very clear right now. We are not getting out of racks. We are not getting out of blades. We are not getting out of towers. We're just taking something from our very stable blade architecture and, and, and making more, fu uh, more functionality out of it other things like we did with the FX or with Vertex back two years ago. Uh, it is the FX architecture, the FX compute nodes are based upon the blade themselves. So the FC, FC standing for flex compute, 630 is in reality an M630. And I will show you for those who can see it, I'll show you an FC630 so you can see the compute node of the M series sitting down on the board. So are these replacing like the, the what is it, the C6100? No, and series? actually I, I can't really address what's going on with the C, okay. but we do have we do have some plans for the future in the C. It's very similar when you see the front of the it's chassis just, that kind of looks like the okay. C6220, but you know, that piece of it is still going towards cloud. Uh, these are still general purpose. Okay. And that's a key piece to always keep in mind is we're still talking something that's a general purpose server. Uh, what you're seeing on this side, if you can see it, we're referring, I, I, I jokingly call them, call them bladelings, but you know, they're compute nodes. So that's how we kind of look at these things. So when we talk about the servers that are being released within the family, we refer to them as compute nodes and storage nodes. Um, and then, like I said, the, we also are introducing something, if you're familiar with our M1000 chassis for the blades, we have something from our Force 10 side of the house called the aggregator, the IOA, that's actually coming into this family and has been announced um, just earlier, or, or late December, so, or in December. Just real quick. You're yes, sir. You're going to continue. Just yeah. Boxes too, right? Oh, yes, yeah, so, so I said, yeah, the R series, you know, none of that's going away. So we were, the, 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 the racks themselves will continue. So let's just kind of back up really quick. And I know I'm kind of short on time here. But when we, uh, back in September with the release of Haswell, we introduced the R630s, the R730s. Uh, in December, we released the, the 430s and the 530s as part of this cadence. We will be releasing E3 servers a little later in the year. So, the quad socket, so that's actually a good point. Uh, the E7s will be coming out, and I just heard someone mentioning the E7s a minute ago. E7s will be coming out in the next couple of months, so you'll see a refresh of the R930 uh, with Haswell. We released it back last year with Ivy Bridge and the E54600 series processors that were part of our 820 family. Uh, that's actually going to be releasing. We're kind of waiting in a, for, for Intel just a bit for the release of the 4600s, but we will be ready uh, when that happens with our 800 series. Uh, and I, I, I'll tell you this right now, we won't have an R. 830 we will have an FC 830 and I'll go quickly through that so basically we are using that 2U chassis but kind of get a little bit more functionality than we would have seen in, in at the, the standard 2U rack but uh, this is what is part of the FX architecture the chassis itself is called the FX2 FX flexible 2 2U 
<laughs> and here it sits in front of you. Uh, FX chassis um, basically has some very close you know, features that you saw in Vertex that it has the compute nodes in the front instead of going to the switches like you would on the M1000 it goes through the PCI switch two PCI slots in the back of the chassis. Um, yeah, where we saw Vertex was geared towards small and medium businesses, towards remote offices, and that type of branch offices. This is going to be geared towards the enterprise because it is a rack. You know, it will be going into the rack form factor. But there will be some similarities that you'll see between Vertex and the FX architecture. Form factor is slightly different, and I'll tell you that right now. Uh, where I can take an M1000 and I could take an M620 or 630 out of the blade and put it into Vertex by just changing changing that MES card. What will happen on the FX side of it is we wanted to keep it in 2U. To keep it in 2U, we had to shave a bit of the top off, you know. So the form factor, it's a little, it's not quite as deep as what you would have seen, or high as you would have seen in the M series. Uh, if we would have put two M630s on top of each other, we'd have an M, it would have a 2.5U or 2.3U, and that's just not industry standard. So, 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 so yes. Your, your storage modules, huh? is that lo locally attached storage for the other compute blade that's in? In the FX. Uh, so, chassis. what will happen, well, we can talk about that really quick. So, if you see this one, one picture at the top, I have a compute node at the top, which is the FC630. The compute node, it's FD. FD332, FD stands for flexible DAS. It is a direct attached storage device. Uh, what will happen is that the compute node will go into the chassis, and one of the instances we have three of the storage nodes that will go into it. They all connect through that mid plane. And so that if it's a single unit, that FC630 owns all three of those compute nodes and also the PCI slots that go with it. I can have instances where I'll have two FC630s and two FD332s below it. That compute node owns that storage node. But then we start getting more options involved. I can have two FC630s, one FD332. I can have two RAID controllers on that FD332, and each of the FC630s now own eight of the drives. And so it basically carves that, that storage node in half. What mechanism do you use to administer that? Uh, CMC is being still used in a bit in that, you know, as far as some of the other stuff. But CMC is kind of the brains, just like CMC was the brains that were sitting behind Vertex. You know, it, it, it's still, so if I go back really quickly, which I haven't actually approached yet, the management, the FX can be managed as if it were a standard rack. So if, you're, if your customers if are, are more familiar, if, if folks are more familiar with my, my racks, the R630s, R730s, want to manage it through iDRAC, they can still continue to order or manage it as iDRAC. This is the difference between the M-Series and the Vertex, where that was only CMC. If you're coming from the blade side of the family, you're more familiar with the uh, oh, with CMC, you can manage it as CMC. CMC is still watching over the whole thing. So can I take one of these FD332s and... Put it in the blade? Right. No, it's the same situation in the fact it's that it is, it is still this. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to show you really, if you can see this. So this is the FC630. So you can actually see that it is, you know, right. it, it's a little shorter, shorter here. And remember I said if I put two of the blades on top of each other, it throws me out of a 2U chassis. The FD332 is the same size. Now are they going to bring something like the FD like that <laughs> that, that's probably 1, a future and you know futures we're talking 14g so this is a 13 and if you know our generation 13 is the g is the haswell generation so uh and not, not at this point in time now you're talking about are we putting something into the m1000 e chassis we still have the ecologic storage but array to do jbod to, to, to jbod yeah right. yeah I, I don't believe so in, in blades okay you know but this but would be the route this would be the route right. it, it, for the fx customers ordering those uh without uh, the storage in case they're doing like boot from sand or, or anything like that. Not the FDs. They can boot from sand via the, the connection that's going on with the server themselves. We will only sell it at a minimum of eight drives, so four on each side. Uh, so we won't ha we won't be offering a, a, a disk list. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. And that, what's what's the purpose of of having a storage node in there if you're still going to boot from SAN well, without drives in it? Are going to use their external yeah. anyway it, versus sure. yeah, you, then you don't buy an FD. Buy then you an don't FC. buy an FD. Absolutely. Right. And so think about this because this is I a, guess the, what I'm getting at is you 
you said this was geared more towards enterprise, where more enterprise will go to sand. External sand. Absolutely. So, so let's talk about the FX chassis just really quick. I think my next slide is the chassis. I'm going to jump ahead. I apologize. So if I look at my chassis directly, um, what you see is the front. This one happens to have four compute nodes on board. So if I turn this around, you see the four compute nodes. This happens to be blank. So you see the four compute nodes. Um, if I turn it the other way, just like in Vertex, the FX uh, chassis actually allow, has eight low-profile PCI cards, PCI slots. They will go, same PCI cards, by the way, that will be in our racks that are low profile. We have them in this thing called a cassette. We actually, because we're in Texas, also call them tacos. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it's a by 16, it's a taco grande. Uh, but I mean, the, the cards will slip directly into this and then slide in to the back plane, into the mid plane of the chassis. So, to your question, this is no different than an R630, R620. So it's like the That's, vertex, basically. It's like a vertex, okay. but it's also like an R series in the fact I'm using my cassettes, my PCI meses, or slots to go to my SAN. But there's an extra cost now associated with it, right? Um, I have to buy uh, the cards if I want to do the extra. No, if you, for, no so if, if, yeah, you have, you'll have to buy, but you have to buy it if you have a rack. So if you think about your R730 and you want to get an Ethernet, you want to get a Broadcom Ethernet low profile card, you'd still be buying a card in your R series to take it to SAN. So it doesn't come in the cassette. It's just a standard low profile card. If you happen to be coming and you have other servers, you could act as low profile. I have to go back to the low profile. I don't have room for a full length like Vertex does. Vertex has three of the full length cards on top. I only have low profile, but I could take a low profile card out of my existing racks today, you know, slam it into this, and then there is my, there is my connection to SAN. Okay, go ahead. How many 10 gig SFP modules will be there? The one gig shown on the slide. Okay, so what we have, so that's actually a very good question. So uh, in addition to my PCI slots, I have these pass-throughs. I can have either two 1 gig, I can have two 10 gig as a pass-through, or I can have this times four for each. Well, and I'll show you how, yeah, we'll show that, how that works in just a minute. Or I can have a two of the IO aggregators, just like you would have seen in my, bla my blades. Those are level two switches. The aggregators can be either SFP plus, tin base T, or it can be a combo of fiber channel. But those are the pass-throughs that will take it other a other avenues outside of the rack. Is 40 gig coming? Or? 40 gig is coming. Okay. Um, you know, and as a matter of fact, especially coming from our Force 10 side of the family. But like I said, if you happen to have, and I'm, I'll just say like a Broadcom 40 gig or any of that type of stuff, that goes in your PCI slots too. So it, we're going to kind of jump ahead, you know, and forget the slides for a bit. Yes, sir. Just one really brief question. What's mm -hmm. the maximum uh, RAM density I can get out of that two years? Out of the two U, so if I happen to have let's do a couple different scenarios, if I got the F, I have four FC six uh, thirties. Yeah. Maximum. Density. So my FC six thirty is just like my R six thirty. That's twenty four dims. Okay. I don't know if I just knocked my. Did I knock my mic off? No, no, it's still okay. there. Uh, you know, it's with uh, twenty four dims. So with my twenty four dims, I can go. Uh, right now we're at thirty two gig dim LR or DDR four uh, sixty four gigs are coming. Oh, by the way, one hundred and twenty eight gigs are coming by the end of the year. Uh, depending on your processor, if you're familiar with our blades, we had some where if I've got some of the very top bins of the one hundred and thirty five watt processors, I may be limited back down to twenty dims. You know, but in most cases, it's a little different than it was in the M series, in that some of those top frequencies I can actually get full 24 dims. So, so if we had 128 gig dim, <laughs> you have the three terabytes. Yeah. Right and, there, just in that one. Okay. Yeah, and then you've got four of them. But then you so right. Yeah. So one point two rules of of right there. <laughs> yeah. Is this the infrastructure going to be used for Evo Rail? Or and not, well, that's something that they're looking at right now. That's still sitting. You know, I think that with the, with the with the P series or with yeah. But yeah, that I, that's in a talk. But then Evo Rail, Rail, interestingly, is under your division from the servers. Yeah. While the Nutanix is under the storage division. Yeah. So obviously yeah. there'll be more synergies with Evo Rail. Yeah, with Evo Rail, absolutely. Yeah. And all the cards in the back are completely modular. It's so like, I don't need one gig, I need 10 gigs. Swap yep. out, swap in, done. Think it in your brain, rack. Whatever you can do with your R630s, your R730s, that's that same scenario. Let's talk about mapping really quick since I've kind of jumped off my slides anyway. So, yeah, blades. 
M630s, M620s, M610s had network, or sorry, M620s had network daughter cards, the NDCs. Remember, the very first one in the industry, I have to do a little bragging, was the M710. That was the first server that lifted the network off the board and gave you the network daughter card. Fabric A. So Fabric A is still here. You know, just like in the blades, because remember, this is a blade. I still have two, I have my, my network daughter cards, Intel, Broadcom, uh, the Emulex. We've actually added the one gig quad port back into the blade family. Still a blade. Fabric A goes to those pass-throughs. So, I have Fabric A going to the pass-throughs, just like in Vertex, it went to the, you know, to, to the pass-throughs. This is doing the same thing. Where my MES was on my blade to take me to the switches in the back of the M1000, my MES card is now taking me to a Gen 3 PCI switch. So, we have direct mapping between the compute node and it's got assigned PCI slots. So you don't have to go out and then back. You don't have to go. It's just right it's going, going straight on through, through that MES card to the PCI switches. So it's hardwired. It's part, it's, it's part of the chassis and passive, therefore. It, it's, uh, it's hardwired, but here's the key piece to this, too, is there are some, some scenarios where, you know, we've got eight PCI slots. If I have FC630s in them, each of them get two PCI slots, plus it's pass-throughs, because the pass-throughs are going from Fabric A on each of those compute mm -hmm. nodes. Um, if I have a storage node sitting directly below my compute node, it doesn't use the PCI slots. So it graciously gives its PCI slots to the compute node. So now my FC630, so I got two FC630s and two of the storage node. Each of these compute nodes now has just gained two more PCI slots. We will see, because in Vertex you have that flexibility of reassigning your, you know, that type of stuff. We will see in a couple of months CMC giving a little bit more flexibility to the compute nodes to adopt, so we call them orphans, <laughs> to adopt some of the orphaned PCI slots. So you're going to see a little bit more flexibility coming. So is that um, not a, is that then not a, just a purely passive hardware thing? Yeah. Because obviously the hardware's got to be hardwired that the PCI yeah. slot internally in the chassis needs to be wired to the different blades, but it can be wired to different blade slots. Because the yeah. PCI slots that would be wired to the compute node, say, in the bottom, are now wired to the... It's not a hardwire. Sorry, remember, the storage it, node would be wired to remember, the Remember, it's still node. that same passive uh, mid-plane that was on the blades. So it's basically going through the switch. Is it like a crossbar? Is it, I, you know, I actually gig, don't know the answer to that question if it's okay. a crossbar. Is it 10 gig? I mean, what's the backbone <coughs> connection between the components? Uh, I want to say it's 10 gig. 10 gig. Uh, yeah, because remember, it's, it's a Gen 3 right. switch that it's going through. <laughs> and now if I showed you the picture, you would basically see those, those MES cards going to the mid-plane. That mid-plane, not mid-plane, the, the, the switch itself. So if, if I could draw it, and I had some pictures in here, and I could probably jump ahead just to give you a visual. There's a whiteboard. This is probably, a, you know, a, another way of looking at it. So when you look at this, they're obviously, they're showing four in a row, but obviously there's two and two on top of each other. Going through that MES to a by 16 uh, lane, going through the switch, it's kind of a, a graphic looking at it. So if I have my, my storage node on it, it would be basically doing the same thing. Going through, hitting the switch, and then the, the connection is now going back so into the So that switching FD. is done in software then? Uh, it, it's a hard switch, but I think there's also software that's, in, that's okay. engaged in it, and I apologize for not giving a straight, you know, solid answer on that, but okay. there, I mean, there's a lot. And it's, it's the same way with Vertex. Is it now the same version of SimC that controls Vertex? Is that yeah. the same version or yep. anything new and improved? There's not anything really new and improved. I mean, we just released a brand new version of CMC in December to kind of bring out that that's supporting uh, the FX architecture. We'll see another refresh of or additions to Vertex that will be happening, or to uh, the CMC, that will be happening like in the April time frame and maybe something a little later as we're bringing servers in. You know, right now CMC can, you actually can we're heading to the point where I can see 20 of these servers stacked just like if it had been in Blades. The screen, the GUI screen, actually looks like if you were looking into the pane of an M series. So you're stacking them. Between. You're stacking them. You can okay. stack, right? Absolutely. And then so there's actually What's US. The max? Uh, 20 is what we're, or I think we've already releasing with 20. That may be happening in the April okay. release. So. And what about upgrades? If I stack them, if I do an upgrade, is it going to affect downstream? I don't know the answer to that. So this is putting a lot of stuff in a 
much yeah. smaller space. So yeah, how do you go for cooling and, and so power we, consumption? So with powers, what, what we're doing with a power, number one, CMC is going to be very aware of what's going on with power and also kind of giving you information as to how to do this. The FX chassis, um, now so we, we have two power supplies, about to add a third power supply. The uh, 1100 watt power supply is the same power supply that you may see in the R920, so we're sharing power supplies, is going specifically to our Aviton-based server, the FM120. FM stands for Flex Micro. It has the C2000 chips on board. You know, these are 25 watt chips, so it doesn't need the heavy lifting that you're gonna be seeing coming out of the FCs. We are really released in December two 1600 watt power supplies. These are still sitting in that platinum class as far as efficiency goes. Uh, so what we will do is that we can guarantee a certain servers will stay at a redundant state from the factory. But CMC, you can actually then say, you know, what we always recommend we always recommend, even with blades, to always check with ESSA, which is you know, one of our, our power uh, algorithms, or our power tools, just to make sure that you're sitting in a, a redundant state or you might actually fall just like in blades in a non-redundant state, depending on how much horsepower you're sitting in that server. Um, so most cases, you will be sitting in a redundant state with four FC630s, you know, a fully loaded. If you look at this chassis, I have a bank of fans, just like you see in a rack, and then I have two blowers. My blowers are actually back-to-back -back fans. Mm -hmm. And those blowers, like in blades, are sitting behind power supplies and the pass-through modules. So points where you might see that you're going to potentially run hot, we've got fans sitting in there. So. To you know, long answer to your short question, algorithms are involved, power supplies are involved. We will be releasing 2,000 watt power supplies in April because the FC430 is going to just need a little bit more horsepower because it's got eight, um, uh, oh, I won't say blade lanes, uh, compute nodes on yeah. board. Oh, so, so, two quick the, questions. So just to sort of finish yeah. up on that. So what's the, so you've got blowers and fans. Yeah. Where's the evac for the, the air? Is it just straight, is it straight through front to back or is it? Just like in the blade, it's straight through, for, uh, yeah. Straight yeah. through front to back. Yeah. So two quick questions. One, uh, what's the amperage draw on these things? Oh. Well, fully populated? Do you know, like, I you don't know, know. I don't okay. know right now. And how loud are they when they're fully that's populated? That's exactly what right? I was uh, So, loud. and the loudness of it too. So that's the other thing too, is we want to keep it. Uh, if you happen to have a power supply fail, you it know, it, it yeah. will definitely go louder. But, but we, in general, how about if just run it? Can it sit on the desk and run like I that? would say no. It's it not can't sit on the desk. Yeah. It's, it's not. So, Vertex, there's a couple things that go on with Vertex that you may not be aware of. Vertex has something called the acoustic setting, which you can even get it quieter. But have you ever taken the side panels off of a Vertex? Mm -hmm. They're very heavy. The sound dampening is going on a lot of cases on those sidebars. I don't have that. I have sheet metal. So, you know, if I would put, and I'm just using this, I'm kind of making this up as I go along, but if I would have put like an R920 and I sat it on a table in a, you know, it's going to run loud. Now, it will be just like that you would see in an R920, because I've seen this happen, is when it first powers up, it sounds like a jet taking off, and then it drops down. The same thing that will happen here. We certainly, you know, when you see something this dense, it's like if I put my M1000 out in the middle of a room, you know, it's, it's going to sing its little blade song. Yes. You know, now I can't tell you, you know, and, and I think we actually have in our spec sheets, and I apologize for not having the answer to this, but we actually have the acoustic standards, you know, as to what it's supposed to be. And we actually have charts that we provide to our salespeople that will say, I have this processor, this processor can support this many dims in this acoustic, acoustic setting. But, you know, I... I have a lot of information in my brain. Well, like some <laughs> other vendors, yeah, they're, they're, they they have say equivalent of an M1000, yeah, and it's loud, yeah. But then they have a smaller, yeah, the, the, the C7s, and it's louder than yeah. the actual, yeah. big, big one. I I would say this is not louder than an M series, you know. But I will say it's not as quiet as a Vertex. How's that? <laughs> These things that are right now, uh, each of those has two or four CPUs in those. Two. Physical two. Okay. So this is the yeah. So these are the E5 2600 V3s, you know, and this is just like you see in an R series, just like you see because this is an M series. The E the uh, FC 830 
is the E7 processor, it will have four processors. It'll be a full, you know, a full height, just like the Blake, because the M830 and the FCA30 are the same server. It will have four processors and 48 DIMMs. Mm -hmm. So that, that still fits four nodes and a two chip. Yes. Okay. So not only that, you, you put two, you can put two of the FCA30s into a 2U chassis. To me, who I've managed our four socket servers uh, in the past, to me it boggles my mind to think that I have two four socket servers sitting in a 2U space. And my joke has always been, I just had a, did a customer briefing if, before coming in here, and my joke is I look at the you know, Dell sales guys and I say, okay, I want to make this really clear, two four socket servers does not equal an eight way. You know, because that's just like guys. No. But but I mean, you know. So so this kind of gives you, you know, that was a really good point. In the fact that you start to see the options, you start to see the flexibility. I can actually. We have configs that will allow for one FC eight thirty sitting in the top bay, and two FD three three twos, the storage nodes, or two FC six thirties. Yeah, I was going to. Uh, I bought and put into uh, production. Your eight eight hundred series uh -huh. a lot because yeah. it's very dense. Yeah, you can get four uh, sockets and tons and tons of RAM, and it's just been a great model for me. So you say that you're gonna not gonna develop the eight series. Sounds okay to me now that you're saying I can get similar density out of it. Look at this picture to the left where you see the FC eight thirty. I mean, it's a one U because it's a blade, it's just like it's going into our M series. It still has its four processors. It still has its 48 DIMMs. I can go back to my little algorithm story and say, if I have two FD332s, my FCA30 has access to eight PCI slots. The pass-throughs, I have my either 1.8 inch drives or my two and a half inch drives on board. This is a piece of the reason why we're, we, we, we have made the decision to just have the FCA30 as, because the, uh, the R820 was a 2U, uh, 2U chassis. I'm going to ask a stupid yeah, question. <laughs> Hopefully I can answer that. That's a full width. Yeah. I see a visible divider in the chassis. Oh, perfect. What we have is we have chassis in, you know, okay. that will have, we, we have a chassis. We're looking at ways, because engineering, our engineering team uses the same chassis and they change the insides. It's just not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So we will have a chassis that is the four bay like you see here. There is a chassis that is a six bay. That six bay will be for four uh, FC 430s and two either 630s or the storage node. There will be a chassis that's an eight bay for eight FC 430s. <gasps> there is a chassis that has <laughs> two bays for two FC 830s and a chassis that has a three bay. I'm we'll make it easier as a good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just kind of line them all up, you know, and we'll, we'll make it easier, but you know, that's, that's How a, that's do they fit physically in? I mean, because you've got four sections, to do each of those four <laughs> sections then have four servers as, lo as long sort of blades. So yeah. I meant for the, for the 8 and 16 yeah, ones. Already... For the which one? For the 8 and 16 ones. Are they long blades or are they four different so things inside? So yeah, this happens to be an Ivy Bridge version that we never launched. This is the FC420 okay. based on Ivy Bridge. So this is, if you, are you familiar with the M420? Our quarter height blade? Yeah. We had a quarter height blade. You could get 32 into it. So this that's this, in this particular version because this is an Ivy Bridge that's sitting right there. So where I could put 32 of these into an M1000 E chassis, I can put eight of these into the FX. The big difference between what you're seeing here and what we are launching with the FC430 on April 7th is that Intel is no longer doing the E5 2400 series processors, which are 400 and 500 series servers use, the value processors. They've gone back to the way they had done it in the past, where it's all one common stack between, and, and I think you probably heard that this morning when, the, when Intel w was here. Uh, so it's one common stack. So these will now be, the FC430 will now be E5 2600 V3s, same ones that are in our R630, same ones that are in the M630. Somehow, through the feats of engineering, we've gone from three DIMMs, like we saw on the M420, to four DIMMs. So now each of these, same size. The, ch the size hasn't changed any. So now I have two E5 uh, 2600 series processors, each with four DIMMs. So it now has eight DIMMs. 
So that's a big difference than that. So this slide in, I have eight of them. Another difference between what we saw in the past is we've actually have an option between a 10 gig dual port or a one gig uh, dual port as far as its network connection. Remember, in the 420s, we had to put it, we put the, the, the uh, network down on the board just because we don't have any room. Uh, another difference, here you actually see the hypervisors. So just like all of our servers, the M420 had redundant hypervisor or hypervisor and vFlash. It's the same thing going on in here. What you may not know, this is that thing where I always tease the Dell folks to say you don't brag enough. Um, so with the M420, we introduced the 1.8 inch solid state drive. And if you re remember with the R630 and the R730, you saw an R630 with 24 1.8 inch solid state drives. Uh, capacity has gone up to almost 960 gigs on this. Cost is going down. My FC430, I have two options. I have an option for two of these um, in, in the server, or I have an option with one and a Mellanox uh, uh, a single port uh, Infiniband um, uh, MES. So because, you know, the, uh, the PCI switch does introduce some latency, we have chosen to bypass, <laughs> hi, we have, <laughs> we, we, we have chosen to bypass the switch with InfiniBand because that's so sensitive and allowing it to go out the front, much like we did with the M610X uh, server back in the past where we had cable So for super low latency things you can just bypass PCI. Bypass the PCI. Directly. Is that a pass through or is it? It's going, you know, it's, it's a full, no, it's not passing through. It's actually coming out the front and then okay. tucking back in. So then yeah, how does it physically connect? Because that bit it, would it'll, be it'll connect just as if it had gone. So if you look at a switch, it'll, it'll go top a rack. You know, I mean, there'll be cabling that will take it. Okay, but directly into the back of yeah. the blade. Yeah. So when, you, when you've got, when the Atom ones are coming out, which then have 16, are they 16 hot pluggable servers in to you, basically? So what it is, this happens to be the FM. You can't really see this because the reason it's got the baffle on it isn't for airflow because these are 25 tops watt processors. There's a lot of cabling in here. So basically in the FM120, there are four of the C2000 chips on board. Each one's a separate server. Okay. Each one has its own NIC. Each one has its own iDRAC. Each one has two UDIMs. Each one either has one two and a half inch drive or two 1.8 inch drives. So if I put four of these into the chassis, I have, you know, in reality, 16 separate servers. Each one can have its own OS. So it's a good so, hosting. So not, not to compare, but honestly, HP Moon, Moonshot oh, Moonshot. one chassis, yeah. you've got yeah. this form factor that can do everything. Right. No, no, they, no they, they've, yeah. got, they've got Avaton also. Yeah. They do have Avaton also. But just but, from a but, form but, factor, you can't put any other blades yeah. in there. You have got the different kind of cartridges, yeah. but mm. you haven't got yeah. a storage one. Or, yeah. yeah. So, and, and they actually will have, you know, their, their hard drives are all part of the cartridge itself. And it's actually in, what, a 4.5U um, chassis for it. So, yeah, this is, this is how we chose to, to, to implement our Avaton. So that whole 2000. system is in hot pluggable for yes. four compute nodes. Yeah. I but mean, you'd be running a web farm anyway, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's just like these guys. I mean, first of all, you know, who's really going to hot plug? A server, but it will be because it's plugging in exactly the same way into basically the same uh, mid plane. The difference between this guy will use the chassis that doesn't have the PCI slots because it's not using the PCI slots, it's going solely to the pass through. So, and networking is there other than obviously the network cards. Or other networking is external. You would have normal 10 gig, 1 gig, mm -hmm. whatever switches yep. external. So that's why it's it's not a blade chassis because it doesn't have integrated networking, but it's a rack mounted with a blade form yes. factor of the actual yeah. compute and storage. But, but it's still very much like the blade and the fact that it's got the network daughter card that are going through those pass-through switches yeah. that are in the back of the chassis or the back of the M1000 no chassis. There's no network switching inside the The network chassis. switching, but you're going, as you just said, you're, you're going through the PCI slots. So um, this is kind of what it looks like. I want to give you a little bit of a road map. So here you see the FC630 like you see here. There's four of them in there. You see this particular rendering with the 1.8 inch drives. Uh, the blade twin to it doesn't have as many of the 1.8 inch drives because the handle blocks, <laughs> blocks it. That's the only, um, this is kind of gives you some switching 
and jump ahead. This is impressive. This is that FM120, that, that uh, Aviton-based server. This particular one happens to also show you with the two 1.8-inch drive per chip. So it just, you know. Uh, and the way we've also implemented that's different than the way HP implemented for Moonshot is we're only taking the top frequency and we're down-coring it. So even though our two-core, you know, is still operating at the same as our eight-core. Now, what we had to give up in that, and they're soft skews, what we had to give up on that is we don't quite get to the low wattage that, you know, Intel shows for the two-core, you know, because we're just down-coring. Okay. So my two-core has the same frequency as my eight-core is what I'm trying to say in this. So you have a lot of frequency. So you're not selling this as as a super, super low power. Um, We're selling it, you know, as, as a hosting box, you know, as kind of a caching box, if you want to look at it that way. Did you say, and I think you yeah. answered or said it a few minutes ago, did you say you can do L2 from here up to the up top L2 rack? is through the, the one, through, through the IOA, right? right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is just kind of a little forward. We are looking at releasing late in the year or mid year, um, adding FTOS. Okay. As an option, so that kind of gives you more of an FMXL exactly type of. exactly where I was yeah. going next, yeah. Here is a rendering of what this looks like with uh, the eight of the FC 430s on board. Uh, truth in advertising, because of this compact nature of this, I can only support up to the 14 core processors. So I can support two of the 120 watts uh, processors. If I just keep talking, then <laughs> I won't make eye contact. Let me show you this. <laughs> uh, so with the FD332, I just wanted to show you what this looks like really quick before they give That's me the, the hook. Blade. This is the storage blade. This is kind of what it looks like in that you That's can beautiful. see the the, 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 the hard drives going down the sides of them. They are hot plug. If you're familiar, familiar with the um, Equalogic storage array in the M1000 plugging in to the mid plane of the M series, it stays hot, the drawer slides out so you can access the drives. This is that same scenario. It's not an iSCSI device, it's an, you know, a direct attach. You push that where it says pull to access drives, you pull it out, it slides out, and then you can actually see the red, the amber, green, hopefully you never see either, you only see the green on it, but you can access the drives in a hot state. Uh, the two and a half inch SAS, SATA, solid state, and you can mix them. Other than the What's cables that, that how it, does it, it still... It's funny, this cabling thing, it kind of rolls up and you know, <laughs> just, but very much like you saw, if you ever, ever pulled that full drawer out of the Equalogic storage array, you kind of saw that same kind of cabling so it just kind of rolls it's coming like that's tightly wound and you just it kind of snaps back in so and what was the max capacity per whatever the max capacity what is the, the two and a half inch drive is okay. yeah it's at okay. 1.2 terabytes right now okay. for the yeah. do you have any concerns about moving the drives parallel with the arm i mean for a spinning disc no okay I, I mean not that i've heard of any concern about that you know I just get nervous moving disks. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. It, it, when it's hot and you're pulling the drive, yeah, absolutely. Especially, like, parallel with the, uh, yeah. the drive uh, yeah. arm. Yeah. So this is, and I want to show, there's the FC830. FC8, so let's talk about releases, too, just for it. April 7th is our scheduled date to release uh, the FC430s and the FD332s. We are planning on being ready to go with the FC6830 and the FC and the M830 on April 7th, but we will be in a hold pattern waiting for Intel to release the E54600 series processors. So we are just marching as if it's April 7th, and, uh, and then you'll start to see also the iterations of CMC that will allow all of this stuff to work together. FX2 availability is... Now, it launched, the, the chassis launched, and I'll show you this really quick. The chassis, and then I'll show you one more really quick. The, the, <laughs> the, the chassis released uh, on, on December 2nd. So the FX chassis are ready now. The uh, FC630 and the M630 are shipping now. And the uh, aggregators okay. are shipping now, as is the FM120. We just add these other two in April, and, and hopefully we can convince Intel that we really want the 4600 at the same time. High thing on the aggregator, so you can basically see what you saw on the aggregator on the M-series. You know, and then, like I said, with FTOS being added, we now kind of grow up into a level three, and then, yep. and then I think that's it.
That was my last slide, she said, but I'm in control. <laughs> and we're listening. So, so anyway, here you actually see it. I think you can kind of picture it, that, that bottom one. You've got one FC830, and you could put two of those FDs in there. So 